as an immigrant coming to Canada as an international student. I um, worked with different international students in navigating through, um, settling into the country as well, and that um, created a passion for me to um, go into immigration consulting. So I did my research, um, attended the University of British Columbia, did a distance learning while I was in, living in Yellowknife. And um, after getting my certification, I decided to um, move forward with um, establishing Astute Immigration and Consulting Services. And um, I chose the name Astute because that's what I wanted the business to be known for. I wanted to ensure that um, I'm providing honest and um, transparent services for newcomers to Canada or people intending to come in to um, study, leave work, and immigrate permanently to Canada. As an immigrant and, um, and an entrepreneur, um, inclusivity and um, diversity is pretty much at the core of what I do. Um, pretty much, I would say that like our services are tailored to everyone of diverse background and everyone is welcome. Um, we try to also ensure that um, services are available to people from wherever they are. So pretty much um, anyone can access our services online, um, reach out to us, connect with us online. Majority of um, our clients are outside of Canada trying to come in here and we work with them regardless of what country they're from, what their educational background is and all of that. So um, I started my journey um, pretty much in Belleville, Ontario, and I was privileged to be with uh, a leader, her name is Jodie Reset, and uh, she inspired me. She made me feel welcome. She uh, made, I mean, created that cultural spirit of inclusivity. And again, for me, it's like giving back. I moved on to Yellowknife, and there was um, Jodie Mudok as well, who believed in me, gave me an opportunity to actually. Um, explore myself, like actually, I mean, help me build my confidence while working and all of that. I moved to Yale, um, to Waterloo and there was Cindy Jefferson who kept on trying to um, motivate me to do better, to grow. And, um, and then I was also um, Sherry Copplestone, who is my business mentor. I met with her since 2019 and she has encouraged me to grow all along. And even finally here in Empire, um, the chair of the Empire Public Library, um, Justice Scott, met for me and she just, um, as always, just encouraged me to, to, to do better. So I've had the opportunity to have different female leaders who have inspired me and have uh, built that um, culture of inclusion. Like they've included me, they've met me, they've made me feel welcome as a newcomer in this country in the different cities they have lived in, in the different workplaces they have been to, or different um, business connections they have had. So it's really vital for me. This is um, a big part of uh, my everyday life. And I also try to do that as well for other people that I meet, like other women that I meet. Um, so there are lots of um, challenges or barriers, I would say, that immigrant uh, women face when they um, when they come in or even trying to settle in and all of that. One of them is the cultural um, barrier. Um, I would say language as well could be an issue. I would say um, also the feeling of isolation, not being able to like reach out to um, see, I mean, to connect with people. So connection, building a network and all of that. And um, with Astute Immigration, what uh, I would say we've done is, um, well, it's, uh, I only speak English. I've had clients that um, speak other languages um, come to me to, for my services and all of that. And I was able to use like Google, uh, every sense one, we use Google Translate, we communicated back and forth. And so I was able to support her with um, submitting an application. I've also mentored women that um, are newcomers to Canada and they feel lonely and all of that. And um, I've just been a friend to them to just walk them through the different um, struggles that they may be facing and also just um, getting them to believe in themselves, encourage them to network with uh, everyone else in the area, like just reach out, go to the libraries, go to community centers, just reach out because no one will really know what you're going through if you're just um, on your own. So, um, 
So that's pretty much what I know I've done personally and through my business. As uh, an immigrant entrepreneur, um, my advice to other women trying to um, navigate through entrepreneurship in the new country would be that um, they should remain strong, stay resilient, and keep moving on. Definitely there'll be ups and downs, there'll be struggles, but they need to just um, believe in their self, like I did, um, build on that confidence, connect with people, connect with mentors, connect with the community, um, celebrate little milestones. Like, um, I mean, whatever you do, like no matter how small it is, just celebrate yourself. Be kind to yourself, very important, because sometimes we put in too much, we feel like we need to convince everyone that we're the best, but honestly, you are the best. So just believe in yourself and uh, stay strong and keep going. So uh, my message to women around the world, um, immigrant women around the world who may be facing uh, challenges with resettlement is you're not alone. There are other people that are going through this. There are people who have gone through this and we need you to be strong. We need you to keep being resilient. We need you to keep up with the sisterhood and um, do this. Like think of this as a movement. You're paving the way for other people that are coming, other women, other immigrant women that want to walk through this path. And if we give up, then there'll be no opportunity for these people. So let's think about our friends, our sisters, our daughters, or our grandchildren that will be walking through this path as well. And think about the movement that you're paving the way for them. And just, just stay strong and keep going.